Just want to welcome all the ladies and gentlemen. You tuned into another classic in the Midnight Mirage Masjid of Higher Learning. Of course, it's your boy Blackbeard. Just want to salute you and welcome you and give you a warm greeting. All right. So you tune into um, the grad school edition. All right. And what we're going to do in these tapes is I want to provide some images, give some visuals so you can picture things in your mind. And a lot of the things that I'm reading, either I'll be sharing the um, transcript on the screen or I may be just showing you an image that's um, giving you a picture of what it is that I'm reading. Um, in the first installment of the Midnight Mirage, we will go over the history and a lot of it I will talk about. But I wanted you to use your own mind to see it. So what we're going to do on these tapes now, we're going to upgrade it and I'll do some um, sharing my screen and things of that nature. And we're still going to read through our sources, whether it's a book, a bibliography, a lecture, um, whatever it is that I may be reading. I'll share it with you. But nevertheless, I'm going to be sharing my screen and you'll be seeing some visuals. All right. Also, the way this is going to work as well is. Um, when I'm going through my different pictures, you know, I have them numbered and ordered. So you'll see me changing through pictures and stuff like that. And also, too, you'll see me doing a time count, just keeping up with the time. So I don't know how we how long we've been going and stuff like that. But nevertheless, you know, I like it to be professionally done and organized so you all can get a good tape. All right. So what we're going to do in this first tape is I want to talk about the ancient faces of Shem and Ham. OK, the ancient faces of Shem and Ham. All right. Now, most of us may be familiar with those terms, Shem and Ham, by being two of the progenitor or two of the offspring of Noah or those people who survived the cataclysmic events of the old world um, during the times of Lemuria, Atlantis, etc. But those people who survived it in the Old Testament, you know, there is um, recordings of it. And Shem and Ham are two of the lineages of um, people who survived. All right. So we're going to look into some of those images of Shem and Ham because. We also want to answer, you know, a variety of questions in tonight's tape. Um, we also want to answer this. How did the ancient people in the Bible look? OK, how did the ancient people in the Bible look? All right. So we're going to look at some pictures to get some visuals behind how they actually look. Some of these ancient Moorish nobles. All right. Um, another thing I want to say, too, is that, you know, in a lot of contemporary literature, um, academia, scholarship, etc. Sometimes our people may be referred to as so-called black um, or quote unquote Negro. But I have a lot more love and respect for our people. So what I do for our ethnicity is, is I, I rather use a word that's more ancient and something that our people did identify themselves with and something that is historically recorded um, that our people were called, you know, and either went by prior to us being denationalized and some of us being made prisoners of war. All right. So you will hear me refer to our people as Moorish. All right. You'll hear me use that as the ethnicity. Um, or the adjective to describe the nationality of the person to, you know, describe the ethnicity of the person rather. But um, that's a word I'll use. So when I say Moorish, I'm really talking about so-called black people or so-called Negro people, so-called African-American people. But um, I'm trying to clean things up and I, I like to use the word Moorish. OK, so when I say the Moorish nobles, I'm talking about so-called black nobles, you know, ancient so-called black people. Another thing that um, we're going to talk about is who are the super ancient ancestors of quote unquote black Americans. All right. That's another thing we're going to be looking at some of the images of the um, ancestors of the so-called black American, because a lot of the hairstyles that we wear today, you know, the way a lot of the brothers wear their beards, the women, the different hairstyles, you know, even some of the clothes and stuff we wear, the head wrappings and things of that nature. A lot of this stuff we've been doing even in the ancient world. So we're going to look at some pictures. Um, and some museums and things of that nature to actually see that a lot of the styles that we wear in today, the they're not nothing new. All right. So let's go into some key points that I want you to really get out of this tape. One main point is that our ethnic slash phenotype has been on every continent of Earth, including America slash Atlantis. OK. Um, and a lot of literature, you can also see the word Atlantis used a lot. But Atlantis actually is talking about ancient America. All right. So what I'm saying right now is that our phenotype, you know, the way that so-called black people look in North America, you're going to be able to find that phenotype throughout the entire earth on all the continents, on all the land masses. OK, so our people, you know, traveled across the Atlantic, believe it or not, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago and started great civilizations such as the Gaul, the Roman Empire, um, also the Etruscan Empire as well. So keep that in mind. Another main point is that we're going to also talk about the ancient Semites or the ancient Shem ancient Shemitic people, because as I said, we're talking about the ancient faces of Shem and Ham. Most of these faces you're going to see in tonight's tape, 
either dealing with the lineage of Shem or the lineage of Ham. All right. And some of the offspring of Ham, believe it or not, look just like the offspring of Shem. All right. So just keep that in mind um, as we're going through this tape that you're going to see ancient Semitic people. All right. And also keep in mind, too, that you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna see a lot of faces that look like so-called black people. But when I refer to black people as Israel, let's say, if I use the term Israelite, I'm talking about an ancient Israelite or really an ancient Semite by blood. All right. So somebody that was born into the family or the people of the book. OK, which has nothing to do with converting into a religion. All right. So we're talking about culture because something that is very, very um, important is that we need to restore our culture, learn what it is and actually restore it and bring it back and activate it. All right. So tonight's tape is to help see with some of the um, cultures that were associated with our ancestry all right so what we're about to do now is start reading in a book that i have for tonight's tape it's called the negro question part three the black pentecost the negro question part three the black pentecost by lee cummings it's a pretty good book a lot of the visuals i have come out come out of this book so we're gonna read through it and analyze some stuff all right so what we're gonna start with right now is with a picture of the black king jehu and i'll read it and we'll you know talk about it as we usually do so black king jehu so black king jehu of judah location of black obelisk british museum this image was taken off the black obelisk of shal man Manasir, found in ancient assyria this image is located in the british museum in england this is an image of king jehu king of judah the son of King Jehoshaphat. This is the first authentic image of any of the kings of Judah. And the only reason that I am using this image is that it came off an official monument of the kingdom of Assyria. So what you're looking at right now is King Jehu. And King Jehu is the king who came in and dethroned Jezebel and her thwarted, perverted, inverted, um, um, you know, kingdom that she had going on really with Ahab. All right. So we're talking about real people who are recorded in the Bible. And this picture was actually found on the Sinashare prism. All right. And this is actually a relic that was created by the ancient Assyrians. All right. So as you can see right here, that King Jehu looks like a so-called black man. You can see his locks or so-called braids. And you can see his beard. All right. So hopefully that's, you know, looking good on the screen. As you can see, King Jehu. All right, King Jehu, all right, King of Israel, all right. So also, let's let's continue to read. So it says, the reason we don't have access to the graves of the kings of Judah and Israel is because the Israelis won't allow it. Later on in this book, I will show you that the King Jehu and the prince of princes of Israel wore fringes on their garments. Now, let's go into the Sinashare prism, which is dated at 689 B.C., all right? This is an official time capsule from the days of the Assyrian king Sinashare, in which he describes how he caged King Hezekiah and took captive Hezekiah's daughters, male and female musicians, all right? So this is a real relic, um, this Sinashare prism, 689 B.C., that is talking about a recording that you can read about in the Old Testament, all right? So they found an actual um, artifact, and, you know, and, and it's going into this information, all right? So that was one I wanted you all to see of King Jehu, all right? So next, we about to go to an image of Abraham, okay? Bear with me, let me scroll and find image number two. So here you have an, a picture of Abraham. We're going to zoom up on him. You can see Abraham, the copper-colored indigenous man. You see the Moorish features. When I say Moorish, I just mean indigenous people, aborigine people, the Autonkinous people, the first people of the earth, okay? So-called black people, all right? You see the crescent moon right there? All right, so that's the image of Abraham. Let's read about it. The oldest surviving image of Abraham, National Museum, Damascus, Syria, Dura Europa Synagogue, 303 B.C., this image is at least 2,300 years old. So that's 2,300 years old. This is the oldest surviving picture of Abraham of the Bible. This image is currently located in the National Museum in Damascus, Syria. And this image was found in the Dura Europa Synagogue. 
The carbon dating of this image goes back to 303 BC to 245 AD. If you take a closer look at the Paleo-Hebrew letter in by Abraham's foot, you will see that it is an upside down J. In fact, the letter is Lamed, the Lamed, excuse me, interpreted means shepherd or teacher. So the Hebrew, Paleo-Hebrew letter Lamed means shepherd or teacher. You can find the Lamed mentioned with the other letters of the Hebrew alphabet in the 119th Psalm. The language and the alphabet that the European Jews are using is Aramaic, not Hebrew. You can tell the Aramaic Hebrew from the original easily. The Aramaic Hebrew is square cursive style, whereas the original isn't. Since this image has the Lamed, I would have to give this image a date of 303 BC. So this image that you're looking at right now of Abraham is dated to 303 BC and it's found in Damascus, Syria. And under his feet right here, you can see the Lamed in the shadows, which is a Paleo-Hebrew um, inscription. That means a shepherd or a teacher. And of course, Abraham is known as a shepherd or the teacher of um, really, I would say, the monotheistic culture that was around in the ancient world since the time of Adam and even before Adam. All right. But nevertheless, when we say a shepherd or a teacher, we're talking about the monotheistic culture, which is ancient Moorish culture, which is our people's culture. All right. So before we go forward, I just want you to get that last image of Abraham in your mind. So now when you're hearing about Abraham in the Bible, this is how, you know, he was descriptive um, 2,300 years ago. OK, in Damascus, Syria. All right. So I will go with now we're going to our next image, image number three. And we go into the Pharaoh that knew Joseph. OK, so now all of us, uh, some of us may be familiar, familiar with the Old Testament stories. Some of us may be not. But if we are familiar with the story of Joseph who was from the line of Shem, he went into Egypt, long story short, and because he understood agriculture and because he had the power of the Most High to interpret visions, he was able to help the Hamites and the Egyptian king by storing up food, etc. Okay, so this is recorded right here, and let's, let's read about him, all right? So this is the Pharaoh that knew Joseph, the 12th dynasty Pharaoh, dated 1929 BC to 1895 BC. This is the Pharaoh or the Egyptian king Amen Nimhat II, so his name is Amen Nimhat II, that elevated Joseph to co regent in Egypt. Co regent is also a governor or a bey. In fact, most of the pharaohs of the 12th dynasty had the name Amen Nimhat. It appears that this family of pharaohs was family to Israel until the last one died in 1812, bringing a pass to the scripture in Exodus that said a new pharaoh arose that knew not Joseph. Now, that's very, very important. And I talk about in my book how, you know, during the ancient world, all the way up to now, there were times where certain lines of Shem and Ham were getting along. And there were times where certain lines of Shem and Ham were beefing and going to war with each other. And when you read about Joseph helping out the king of Egypt at this time, this is when lines of Shem and Ham were, you know, they were cool. There wasn't no beef. They were both living in Egypt. And you got to remember that Joseph's brother, brothers and his father also ended up coming into Egypt. All right. And a lot of them procreated with Hamitic women. And then you had offspring in Israel, I mean, in Egypt, who were mixed between Egyptian and Israelite. All right. And of course, after that, Pharaoh died and Joseph died, you know, um, Israel started to, you know, multiply more and more and more. And then, of course, a new regime comes in, a new royal family comes in who knew not Joseph. All right. And then, of course, they had a beef with Israel. And then that's when they started to make them prisoners of war and they denationalized them. OK. So let's go on to the next image. But I just wanted you to see that this is the um, Egyptian Pharaoh all right, or the Egyptian king that knew Joseph and was friendly to the people of Israel and also believed in the same true God, one God as the people of Israel. He would have had to believe in him if he knew that this is the source of, of Joseph's wisdom. All right. So only a foolish man wouldn't believe in the most high God. All right. So now we go into image number four. OK. Image number four. So what you have right here in front of you is an image of Moses, the prophet Moses. All right, let's read about it. So here's an image of the prophet Moses. All right. Dated at 2300 years old. All right. So 2300 year old image of Moses and the Egyptian army. Location of artifact National Museum, Damascus, Syria, 303 B.C. So that picture of Abraham and this picture of Moses is in the same museum in Damascus, Syria. 
So now you see where the United States may be over there trying to take control and why a lot of these European Christian powers want to take control over there to get a lot of these artifacts, all right? So as you can see right here, Moses is depicted as a copper-colored Moorish man, all right? You can see the curly hair. You can see the Moorish beard, just like the brothers have today. And in the background, you see the Egyptian army, all right? And as you can see, they're copper-colored as well. You know, I'll zoom in on them a little bit. You can see the Egyptian army right here, all right, in the background, copper-colored men. And you can see Moses right here with the beard, the copper-colored man. Look like a so-called black man, all right? So that's an image of the prophet Moses, one of the oldest ones, 2,300 years old. So you're looking at something that a lot of people probably have never seen before, all right? That is image number four. So now we're going to go to image number five. All right. Image number five. Here you have an image of the Moorish Israelites or the black Israelites. This depicted by the Assyrians. So remember, we talked about the center share prism earlier and how the Assyrians, when they um, destroyed northern Israel and they dis, you know, displaced those people, they took a lot of them into captivity and they also recorded how they looked. So here is an image of it. And as you can see from the British Museum in London, the Afro haired men shown above are the ancient Israelites or the ancient ancient Semites or the ancient Shemites known as the Hebrews. The image you are looking at is by the Assyrians who destroyed Israel 3000 years ago. As confirmed by the image, the Hebrews who wrote the Bible were a quote unquote black people. So as you can see right here, the Israelite brothers, you can see them. You see the beards. You see the hairstyles, the so-called braids, the cornrows, the natural hair, the curly hair of, of our people. They look like Ricky Williams. They used to play with the Miami Dolphins. All right. You see the beard right here. You know, like the so-called black man. You see he got his hands out in prayer. All right. So there's two of them. These are two Israelite men right here. This is how the ancient Israelites look. And their descendants today look this same way if they're not amalgamated. All right. Once again, these are the people who wrote the so-called Bible. So now we're going to go to image number six, all right? And also, too, this is how Yahweh Yeshua, or the man that the Roman uh, Christian church calls, quote-unquote, Jesus, okay? This is how he would have looked as well because he comes from this same lineage of people, all right? So now we're going to image number six. Image number six. Let's see where we at. Here we are right here. Image number six. So here we have image number six. But I'm going to do a little reading real quick. First of all, you're looking at the image of the Levites. As you can see, they look just like the people in the northern kingdom. All right. As you can see right here, they actually have so-called braids. And they also have the beards. Once again, these are images of ancient Semitic people. So if somebody calls you an ancient Semite or, or excuse me, an anti-Semite, that means that you're an anti people who look like this. L let me say that one more time. If somebody says you're saying something anti-Semitic or somebody says you're doing something that's anti-Semitic or anti-Semite, they're saying you're doing something that's against people that look like this person that's on the screen right here. OK, keep that in mind. Now let's do a little reading. Now, these are the. Um, let's see. The church in the wilderness. Every time I meet a New Testament Christian, I start the conversation off with one question. Do you know the history of the church? I receive the same response every time. And that is the church was started and taken over by the Gentiles on the day of Pentecost. I always have to state the obvious that according to Peter, there were devout Jews from every nation under the sun. Let me repeat that. I always have to state the obvious that according to Peter, there were devout Jews from every nation under the sun. This is recorded in Acts chapter two, verse one through five. So Peter said that there were Jews or Semitic peoples or Israelites, people that look like this person on the screen, scatter in every nation under the sun. So then we say earlier that the Moorish peoples were the indigenous inhabitants and civilization starters for all continents under the sun. All right. So that's just something I wanted to read real quick. So you're looking at an image of the tribe of Levi, the sons of Asaph. See Chronicles chapter 15, verses 16 through 19 and 21. And this is mentioned on the Sinashev prism in the British Museum. 
So this Sinashir prism, or once again, that war with the Assyrians is where most of the Israelite information is recorded. So it actually was recorded against the people they was going to war with. All right. So next we're going to. Um, um, we're going to read about Yahawasha or the man that they call so-called Jesus. All right. Also, too, Yahweh or so-called Jesus would have looked like this man right here. I said that before, but I just got to say it again. I want to use so-called Jesus as a bridge between the Old Testament and the New Testament because that is what he is. Since the powers that be want to keep the description of Yeshua of the Bible a secret, I will have to do a composite sketch of so-called Jesus according to the available information in the Bible. The apostle John describes Jesus in the first chapter of Revelations. But no one seems to be paying attention. Jesus came from the tribe of Judah, so it was stand to reason that he should look like his brothers. John said, quote, he has hair like lamb's wool and feet that looks as if they were burned in a furnace and eyes that were a flame of fire. End quote. John, the apostle, describes Yeshua or Yahweh as being black or quote unquote Moorish after he rose from the grave. But let's see how the prophets describe Yeshua. Yeshua or Yahweh the Nazarene, Matthew chapter 2, verse 23, and said by the prophets, Yeshua shall be called a Nazarene, Numbers chapter 6, verse 1 through 5. While the Nazarene was under a vow, he was to let the locks of his hair grow. L Lamentations chapter 4, verse 1, 7, 8, and five, chapter 5, verse 10. The visage or face of the Nazarites is blacker than coal. Our skin was black like an oven. I have presented an image of what Yahweh of the Bible looked like. See the next page. So as you can see right here, this is what he would have looked like. He was a dark skinned man. He probably was even darker than Blackbeard. You know, I'm more of a copper colored, bronze colored. He was even darker. So he was a dark skinned, copper colored man who had woolly hair, but it was white because he probably was in his he, the image they saw probably was when he was maybe a little older, you know, because he ascended at 33. But nevertheless, that's an image of him. All right. So you're looking at an image of your Shai right here in front of you. OK, based on the information, this is a composite sketch of what a Nazarene would look like. So you're looking at what a Nazarene would look like. These brothers from the tribe of Levi have black skin, hair in, in locks, hair like lamb's wool, and their skin is black like an oven. Don't forget the fringes. This is what Yahweh Shah of the Bible would have looked like. He would have looked like the family he was born into. Okay? So this is how Yahweh Shah looked. All right? On the screen, the man that they call so-called Jesus. So I wanted you all, you know, to get a good image and a real image um, of actually the prophet of so-called black people of America, believe it or not. So let's see where we at. All right? So now we're going to read about images of Judeans that haven't been seen in over 2,000 years. And later on, we're going to get an image of what I'm reading. All right. So the images also of Judean people were also recorded on Roman coins after Jerusalem or Judah was destroyed in 70 AD. All right. So that's also where a lot of these images are coming from. All right. And you're going to see this picture I'm talking about in a, in a minute. The image of the black male on the left and the black female on the right are of two black Hebrew Israelites from 70 AD. These are images that Vespian Caesar had placed on these coins to commemorate the, his destruction of Jerusalem. These images are from the perspective of the ruler of the known world at that time. And why would I not believe his report? Why on earth would anyone question the eyewitness 2000 years later unless there was a hidden agenda? He was the one that destroyed Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD and was responsible for taking the records of the temple of back to Rome, excuse me. So what you're looking at right here is an image of um, the people who, you know, were taken into captivity um, in 70 AD. All right. So now let me do a time check real quick. OK. Now we're going to um, go go to the Parthians, okay? So we're going to image number seven. Now what you have right here is an image of a Parthian 
or in ancient Iranian or in ancient Persian. Okay, so this is how they would have looked right here. And let's read about them. All right, the Parthians. King Mithridates, the second of Parthia, black or Moorish Iranian king, dated 123 to 88 BC, coin found Wikipedia and wild wind coins. On the day of Pentecost, found in Acts chapter 2, verse 9, the apostle Peter mentions that the Jews from Parthia or Iran were present to keep the feast. Now, I always assumed that these Parthians were European because every Bible in history that I had ever seen depicted the Parthians as European. I began to do a little research, and lo and behold, I found out that a Parthian was none other than an ancient Iranian. The ancient Iranians were the Persians of their day, and they were depicted as black people, as you can see from the image of King Mithridates II. So you're looking at an image of King Mithridates II, an ancient Iranian or an ancient Persian, and they were a so-called black people. So they, they were Moorish peoples, all right? Now, don't get confused by this Parthian king being an Iranian. The original Iranians were a black people until the white tribes, the white Ottoman Turks, overran Iran in 5, 1535 AD. This is a known fact among the historians and scholars of this generation. The people that are calling themselves Arabs in the Middle East are not the original Arabs. They are immigrated people left over from the Ottoman Turk Empire. These people in the Middle East don't even know their true identity. They have been brainwashed into believing they are the descendants of Ishmael, Abraham's oldest son, when in fact they are the descendants of Japheth, the father of all Europeans. Now, earlier we looked at an image of Abraham, and as you all can see, he was a dark-skinned, copper-colored man. Abraham had a son named Ishmael, who was his eldest son, with an Egyptian woman by the name of Hagar. And we all know how the Egyptians look. They look just like the rest of the Semitic and Hamitic people. So... Ishmael was a dark-skinned, copper-colored man. So the modern-day so-called Arabs that are ruling in Saudi Arabia, they are not the original Ishmaelites. The original Ishmaelites would be cousins of so-called black people today. So that means they would look similar to so-called black people today. So the Ishmaelites are actually the indigenous, the autochthonous Iranians, the autochthonous Arabians, the autochthonous Israelites um, over in with the Levant or what they call today the modern-day, quote-unquote, East Middle East, you know. So you're looking at an ancient Iranian right here or an ancient Parthian. And there were Israelites living in Iran during the day of Pentecost. So not all the Israelites were living in Judah or Israel at that time. They were scattered out. And there were also Israelites in America. And we're going to look at some pictures of them um, in a little while. All right. So now we're going to move on and look at an image of the Medes and the Persians. Okay. Image number eight. All right. Image number eight. So right here, we have an image of the Medes and the Persians. All right. I will constantly refer to the Apostle Peter in this piece because he is an eyewitness as to which nations were present in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. In Acts chapter two, verse nine, Peter states that the Jews from Mede were present. So I went back to the archaeological library to see what an ancient Mede looked like. And as you can see in front of you, this is what an ancient Mede looked like. And as you can see, they have the curly beards, just like the tribes of Levi and Judah. And they also have the curly hair. This is what the Medes and Persians look like. All right. So as you can see that all the people in the ancient worlds, the tribes of Shem and Ham, a lot of them look similar. They look just like so-called black people today. All right. So you really can't tell the difference between this Mede right here and that ancient Judean that I showed you all on one of the mother pictures. So let's read about the Persian Empire real quick. All right. Um, let's see. All right. All right. So let's start at this first sentence. In Acts chapter two, verse nine, Peter states that the Jews from Mede were present. So I went back to the archaeological library to see what an ancient Mede looked like. And I came away with, with this black Mede bringing tribute to Darius. History validates the Bible claims that there were Gentiles in the Mede Persian Empire and there were they went by the names such as Jehuzi, Bactrian, Takharian and Budini. Just to name a few, excuse me, you might not believe this, but this ancient black me was nothing but a modern day Iranian. But don't look to the so-called Middle East for clarification. Why? 
because the original Iranian has been replaced by the white tribes called the Ottoman Turks. And this happened in the conjunction with the replacement of the black Iranians in 1535 AD. So what you're going to find out that through, I would say, really since about 500 AD, and of course there was a period before, but basically through the various Yakub waves, when the when the aborted creations from the Yakub experiments were let out to different uh, remote islands and remote caverns and remote foothills that they were in, they started to bleach out and destroy certain areas. And a lot of the original inhabitants that were dark skinned Moorish peoples, they were they were displaced or they were removed and the foreign white barbarians would come in. They would take on the culture and identity of the indigenous people and then, you know, call themselves that that. So the people that's calling themselves Iranians today, they are not the original Iranians. The people that's calling themselves Iraqis today are not the original Iraqis, the original Chaldeans or Babylonians, the original Akkadians. And the people that's calling themselves Israelites today are not the original Israelites at all. All right. So now we're going to image number nine. OK, image number nine. So now we're looking at an ancient Mesopotamian. All right. Now, this is very, very critical and key because Mesopotamia is where Abraham was from. He was from amongst the Chaldeans. So you saw how an image of Abraham looked. And this is how the people who lived around Abraham looked. This is an image of the black Mesopotamians from Akkad. But in your Bible, Genesis chapter 10, verse 10, is it is spelled A-C-C-A-D. This Akkad of your Bible was part of the ancient kingdom of Nimrod, one of the black sons of Ham. But I will save that discussion for on him for a later date excuse me i have inserted a map below to help you visualize the location of mesopotamia and you will notice it was located in ancient babylon if you take a closer look at this brother you will notice that he has waves in his hairstyle that is a black hairstyle so as we're gonna look up and zoom real quick as you can see this ancient chaldean or this ancient mesopotamia actually has waves so you know how you know the brothers we go get our haircut you know niggas be fresh you know, we get our wave grease, put it on, get that brush, put on the do-rag or whatever. Then in a few hours, we take it out. I mean, take it off and, then, you know, the waves be popping and shining. Well, that's what they was doing in the ancient world as well. And here you have a picture of it. All right. So there's nothing new under the sun, as the ancestor King Solomon said. All right. So this is an ancient Mesopotamian. OK. The ancient Mesopotamians were a black people. And guess who came from Mesopotamia? If you said Abraham of the Bible, you were correct. Abraham came out of Ur, which was a city-state of Sumer. Your Bible mistranslates Sumer as Shinar. These people describe themselves in their poetry as the black-headed people. If you don't believe me, go to the internet and pull up an article on Sargon the Great, and he boasts in the cuneiform tablets that he ruled over the black-headed peoples. So once again, if you want to know where Sumeria um, ancient Babylon, ancient Akkad. We're talking about Persia. I mean, not Persia, excuse me. It, it would be south of Persia. We're actually talking about that area of, of Iraq. Um, once again, the, the so-called Middle East, the southern part of so-called Asia Minor, um, on the other side of um, of um, Canaan. Excuse me. All right. So now we're going to go to image 10, which is when I mentioned a little earlier when it showed the Moorish Judean woman in captivity. So here's a picture right here. And of course, recently we had this Breonna Taylor situation and the so-called black woman, you know, who um, I guess is, is, is also treated with a heavy hand. All right. So here's an image of the ancient Judean Moorish woman. All right. From 70 AD. Let's read about it. This image of a Jew was recorded by her captor, Titus and Vespasian Caesar, as you can see, he is depicted as a black man with a huge afro and a huge nose. But as you can see with her, she's depicted as a Moorish woman. You can see, you know, she has the lips and the nose of a so-called black woman. All right. Um, this is an image of a New Testament Hebrew Israelite dated to 40 years within the crucifix of Yahweh. All right. So once again, just going back to those coins that the Romans created. And this is on the back of one of them. All right. And this coin that you're looking at was actually um, valued at about twenty nine hundred dollars. OK, about twenty nine hundred dollars. Once again, these are Vespasian Caesar commemoration coins. And you're going to see also in a minute that most of these Romans were so-called black or Moorish as well. OK, so the Romans going against the Israelites is Esau going against Jacob. Keep that in mind. All right. 
because a lot of the Roman kingdoms um, actually had been, you know, infiltrated by Esau. All right, let's see. So now we're going to, before we move on, as I said, uh, this is an image of a black Jewish woman or a Moorish Jewish woman on a Roman coin dated at 70 AD. All right. Vespasian Caesar's coin as he destroyed Jerusalem and Judah in 70 AD. Okay. All right. So now, before we go to our next image, I want to read something real quick. We're going to read about the Egyptian images of the Jews or the Hebrews taken from the Saqqara pyramid. So there is a pyramid in Egypt that actually has um, a part where it talks about the Hebrews or the so-called Jews or the people of God, as it really says. Let's read about it. Now, you've seen plenty of images of how the Hebrews or the Jews look. But there's an Egyptian hieroglyphic. And once again, the people look like this woman that you see in front of you. So I don't have the actual image, but I'm going to read from, from this part in the book. This image was taken off the wall of the cave at Saqqara Pyramid in Djoser, Egypt. And as you can see, the ancient Egyptians depicted the Jews or the Hebrews as black people with woolly hair. I want to emphasize that these Egyptians were eyewitnesses to what a Jew looked like. They were their captors. Now, the advocates of the Hyksos say that these aren't images of the Jews of the Bible, but they forget to read this document that the Semite is holding in his hand. It reads, these are the Amo, interpreted, these are the people of God. So the Amo, the people of God, the Israelites, the Semites, these are all the same people. Also, another term is the people of the book. So in early in the tape, when I talked about, you know, the original ethnicity of so-called black people, the original culture of so-called black people, it is an ancient Hebraic an ancient Semitic culture. And believe it or not, monotheistic, because we knew that there was one true God. We knew that there were less of spiritual forces, but we knew that there was one true God responsible for creation. And that is we that's what we acknowledged, you know. So once again, you're looking at an image of an ancient Judean woman from 70 A.D. All right. So now we're going to look at an image of an indigenous American, all right, an indigenous Israelite American. Now, as you can see, this is a statue right here of an indigenous American. But these indigenous American statues are in Europa. Now, I'm going to show you multiples of them. Some of them are in Germany. Some of them are in Switzerland. They're in different places throughout Europa because ancient Europa or ancient Gaul, ancient Britannica was ruled by the Moorish peoples. And this is how they looked. So even in Europa, they would admire where their ancestors came from, which was Atlantis, a.k.a. America. So what we're going to figure out in this tape and in future tapes is that the ancient civilizations of Iberia, um, Italy, Etheria, um, Rome, Gaul, Britannica, Spain, a lot of those civilizations, their ancestors came from the Americas. Yes. So they, they, they reversed the story. The Egyptian pyramid science was learned from the Americans. We took that science. That's why you see pyramids that, that are in Indonesia look just like the ones in the Americas. OK, so a lot of us from the West went to the East. And then after a few hundred years or a few thousand years, those same people may have came back to the West. So this is also what happened a lot from the Moorish nobles of Europa when they came back to um, America. So what you see right here is an indigenous American. All right. Not a so-called slave. As you can see right here, the dark skin, just like how Yahweh Shai is described, you see the woolly hair. You can see the texture of the hair, okay, the woolly hair, and you can see the earring, you know, you know how people be styled out. But as you can see, this is an indigenous Moorish American, all right, but this statue is in Europe. So they paying homage to our people over in Europe. All right. So the next thing I want to go to is we're going to read about the Cyrenians. Or some of the ancient people of the Mediterranean, uh, which are the descendants of the Eturians or the Etruscans. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let me find my page real quick. Give me a minute. All right. Here we are. So let's go to this image. So now we're going to image number 12. Image number 12. Here we are right here. So as you can see, these are the ancient people of Cyrene, all right? This is the king right here. And as you can see, they're depicted as so-called black people. Look at the king's locks. You see the braids or the so-called locks or what you all call dreadlocks, 
they go all the way down to the, you know, to his chair. And as you can see, he's a dark skinned man. All right. And these are the other Moorish peoples of the empire probably coming to pay tribute. As you can see one right here, he go look like a Moorish woman. No, they look like a man. He go another Moorish man. So these are probably all men, but you know, they got pictures of men and women. But anyway, you see they're all Moorish people, so-called dark skinned people. All right. So let's read about it. This is an image of the Cyrene, Cyren, Cyrenaic king, Arc, Arcilius, excuse me, that has been carbon dated to about 565 BC. And the king and his subjects are rendered back by eyewitnesses of his generation. The fine print said he was overseeing the bundle of wool, but the historians dispute that. So anyway, you can see right here, this is a Cyrenian Jew, all right, or a Cyrenian Israelite. So as you can see, there were Israelites all throughout the Mediterranean, all of them were not just in Judah, okay? A lot of them were in the Grecian states. And unfortunately, a lot of them had been Hellenized and they were worshiping Diana, Zeus, Apollo, Addis, and a lot of those, you know, pagan deities. But I'll probably go into that in another take. So as you can see, this is how they look across the Mediterranean, the descendants of the Etrurians or the Etruscans, all right? Also, too, in my book, uh, America, Moorish Paradise of the Plumed Serpent, I talk about how the ancient Etruscans or the Aturians were also in, in America. And a lot of us went over to the, the Far East and in Fort Benning, Georgia, they found a tablet that had Minoan or Cretan writing on it. So why would they be finding a tablet in Georgia that has writing on it that people spoke in the quote unquote Mediterranean seas? All right. So now we're going to image number 13. And we're going to look at a picture of the Moorish or the black quote unquote Romans. Image number 13. Here you are. As you can see, you see the beard. As you can see with all the brothers, they, they typically had a beard if they could grow one. And as you can see, the, the, the natural curly hair. All right. So this is a Roman emperor. So when I say a Roman, I'm not talking about a Caucasian or a quote unquote W-I-G-H-T person. I'm talking about somebody that looks like this. All right. This is a so-called black man. The original Romans. All right. And also, too, when it comes to the Romans, some of them were Israelites and some of them were Edomites. All right. From the line of Esau, because there is a misteaching out there that says Esau is the quote unquote Caucasian or white man. But he is not. OK. Esau would have been um, a copper colored person. Um, but nevertheless, he would have looked like the Israelites. OK. Now, did Esau get bleached out from dealing with the Horites? And dealing with the, 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 the troglodytes descendants who are living in the caves of Mount Seir, of course he got bleached out. But nevertheless, when he started out, you know, he looked a little bit like how the rest of the Israelite or the Semitic people would have looked. All right. So this is an ancient Roman. This is a black Roman emperor, Macrinus the Magnificent. All right. This coin was sold for two hundred and three thousand dollars. No, no, two hundred and three thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. So this coin right here was two hundred and three thousand dollars, y'all, for a coin with a black emperor on it. And it's dated at two seventeen A.D. I know that this image has to stagger your concept of your education and television, but this is the truth concerning the black Romans or the ancient Romans. A lot of the Augustus and the Caesars were black men. This image of the black Macronus Caesar is not an anomaly, but it was the norm. Based on the images coming out of Rome, one has to conclude that the Romans were a mulatto society and history supports this view. The original people of Rome were called the Etruscans and these were black people somewhere between and these were black people somewhere between 1300 and 1011. Let me read that. Excuse me, y'all. The original people of Rome were called the Etruscans and these were a black or a Moorish people. Somewhere between 1300 and 1100 BC, the Mediterranean was invaded by the W.I.G.H.T. or the Troglodyte descendants of Yakub, the white Caucasian slave Neanderthal barbarians. OK, but I'm going to reread what it says here. Somewhere between 1300 and 1100 BC, the Mediterranean was invaded by the white barbarians and gradually Rome became Hellenized. What does Hellenized mean? It is a fancy word for half breed, mixed race or mulatto. The Romans, the Romans that came to Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost were black or Moorish Jews, because at this point in history, 
There was no such thing as a European or a quote unquote white Jew. They didn't exist at this point in history. That wouldn't come later until the Khazars were converted 700 years later. This is a very hard pill to swallow for the European Jews since they have made a point of going around the world claiming the black Jewishness that Moorish Jews who have always been the true people. So as you can see right here, the author is basically saying that the original Romans were called the Etruscans and they were a Moorish or a black people. These Etruscans were the original Latin speakers, okay, the ancient Latin speakers. And they were the ancient Latin speakers of the Gulf of Mexico, um, the ancient Latin speakers of Peru, the ancient Latin speakers of Central America, all right? So the ancient Latin speakers that I'm talking about were even the people that, you know, that you all know of of being in the western states of North America, all right? So you're thinking about California, um, uh, Nevada, Arizona, and you're thinking about all those quote-unquote Native American um, um, that Latin culture that's out there, that ancient Latin culture, that's the Moorish Etruscan culture that we're talking about here. All right. And those people are the Romans, the ancient Etruscans are the, also the Cretans and the Minoans. The ancient Cretes are nothing but the Minoans and they are depicted as a black or Moorish race by the people, by the eyewitnesses who drew this image. The Cretans were a people situated near Greece along the Mediterranean Sea. They were considered part of the sea people and they were all a black people. So as you can see, the Etruscans, they all, you know, they all look, they had these same features. You know, they were all Semitic peoples for the most part. Uh, some of them Hamitic, but nevertheless, the Semitic peoples. So we looked at the black Roman king, Macrinus. All right. 217 AD. That's an image of him. So now we're going to image number 14. Image 14. And this is an image of the Babylonians or the Chaldeans, all right? The Babylonians or the Chaldeans. Let's read about them. This is called the Unknown Psalter and is currently being housed at the West College at Bristol. It depicts the Babylonians and the Jews as being black. It gets harder to not only locate these images, but to track down the references. These images date back to 1000 AD and they are located in the British Library in Britain, Britain which supports earlier statements that I have made that the Europeans have always known who the Negro in America truly is. These black Babylonians were the ones who destroyed Jerusalem in the days of King Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon. So as you can see right here, you have the ancient Chaldeans right here, you know, being harsh and brutal towards the ancient Semitic peoples or the ancient Judeans, all right? Now, what we want to pay attention to right here is that these Chaldeans or these Babylonians, if you look on top of their heads, you can see that these three brothers right here are all wearing fezes. OK, they're all wearing fezes. Now, in the ancient world, some of our people had kingdoms and empires where they ruled justly and some of them ruled unjustly. OK, so I don't want to get into that whole who's good and who's bad thing. But what I want you to see is that ancient Moorish culture you know, is represented in all our peoples, you know. So even the ancient Babylonians were wearing fezes, just like the modern day Americans, Moorish indigenous peoples, they wear fezes, all right? So once again, this is part of your culture is all I'm showing you. And in a minute, you're going to see a picture where your culture is stolen from you. So as you can see right here, the original people who wore the fez were the Moorish indigenous peoples of the earth, the ancient Semites, the ancient Shemitic people, the ancient Hamitic peoples, okay? They are the ones who wore the fezes, the turbans, prayer shawls, all that type of stuff, all right? And I just wanted you to see this picture. Ancient Chaldeans, that's a picture of them, all right? So now you're going to look at a picture of some Shriners or the WIGHT people when they take your culture. Um, the other day I was watching the movie The Great Gatsby with somebody, and I had never seen it before, but there was a scene that came up, and it was very, very fast. And you're looking at a, a still shot image of it. And it was a scene where the men were playing, you know, jazz and stuff at a party, but they had on fezes, the same type that you saw in the Chaldean picture with the Babylonian. And as you can see right here, these men, all right, the descendants of Yakub, they are wearing fezes, all right? The black fez right here, you see them wearing a fez, playing the instruments. You may not see this guy in the background, he's wearing the maroon colored fez. And you can see right here, this guy playing the trumpet, um, he's wearing a fez, all right? Now, I'm going to go to another picture, and you're going to see it better. Now, look in this picture right here. You see this man wearing a fez with the tassel on it and the great Gatsby. Once again, showing you your culture. 
So if you don't want to wear the turbans, you don't want to wear the crowns, you don't want to wear the plume feathers and all that stuff, then these other people are going to wear it. And they're going to say that they the Israelites and they the Semites. So that's why you need to get your culture back. You see them wearing the, the, the uh, fez, playing the instruments with the women. This is how we used to be. You know what I'm saying? Playing instruments with our women, wearing fezes and stuff like that. So now we're going to go to image number 16. All right. This is an image of the Jews according to the Assyrians. And as I said earlier, we looked at a lot of images of the Jews according to the Assyrians. The eyewitness in this case is Sennacherib himself. Once again, the Assyrian king. He writes on his prism how he laid siege to Lashish. And these are the images of the Jews or the Hebrews of Lashish. The Assyrian eyewitness described the Jews as being black. So once again, here's another picture of the Assyrians. As you can see right here, the Assyrian soldier who also has the beard and he has the locks or the curly hair, just like the rest of the Semitic or the Hamitic peoples, the indigenous peoples. So even the Assyrians were so-called black or Moorish. But you see the Assyrian soldier right here and you see them leading the Judean or the Israelite peoples. Uh, these were these were from the northern kingdom, excuse me, but leading the Moorish Semitic peoples into captivity. You see the child right here and you see the two grown men zoom in on his beard. You see the beard, the curly beard, natural beard, and you see he got his locks, natural hair. Once again, so-called black people. These are the Jews according to the Assyrians. This in image is found on the Sennacherib's um, prism located in Britain, um, London, so-called Europe. So once again, they know how the ancient Jews look. So now we're going to go to the image of a Galatian king, image number 17. Image number 17, here's an image of a Galatian king. All right. So this is the black or the Moorish king of the Galatians, King Pesinos. All right. So this location of this coin is the Galatian Museum in Asia Minor Coins. I know that this is a hard pill to swallow, but the Galatians were a black race of people. And if you'd want to know the truth about it, they are they and the Phrygians are one and the same people. Galatia was part of the Phrygian Empire, and that is the reason what Peter mentions them in his apostolic letter. I have to say about the brothers that showed up on the Pentecost, but I will save the crown for the crowning moment. Be patient. So as you can see, once again, the Galatians, the Ephesians, the people of Corinth, they were so-called black people or Moorish peoples. And here's the king of Galatia right here. So you see the nose, see the curly hair. Once again, a so-called black man, all right? This is dated. Um, I don't have a date for this one, all right? Probably somewhere around 62 to 40 BC, all right? Something like that. So now we're going to go to image number 18. Image number 18. Image number 18, where we at? So these are the people of Ephesus. Okay, let's read about them. All right. This image was found in Ephesus or modern Turkey. So if you hear that term Ephesus, that's modern day Turkey or Asia Minor. Asia Minor is Turkey, Anatolia, just, you know, Asia Minor. All right. This image was found in Ephesus or modern Turkey. And if you take a closer look at this Ephesian, you will see that he has an Afro and is brown skinned. All right. So this is how an Ephesian look, brown skinned. Ancient Etruscan descendant. And you also can see right here, too, he has the feather, just like the indigenous Americans wear. All right. So once again, a lot of these people that are part of the Grecian Empire, they still carried over their ancient Atlantean or ancient American culture. And you saw it showing up with them using serpent motifs and things like that. So as you can see, the feather right here in the crown, ancient Ephesian, so-called black man. All right. All right, so now we're going to go to image number 19. Now, as you can see right here, here is another statue. I think this one is in Switzerland of another autochthonous American, Moorish American, but they paying homage to him over in Europa because we had trade and we had a global international empire with them. So just like you see, you know, Moorish kings and queens of Europa uh, being adorned and, and respected over here, they also respected the kings and empresses of America over there. And you're looking at a real statue of one of them. I think this one is actually in, in Switzerland. Okay. 
as you can see this is a dark-skinned moorish man a descendant of shem all right with the earring and a turban on with the feather in the middle all right in the crown part so let's read something real quick all right i want to read herodotus quotes the lineage of the greeks all right so as again i talked about the greeks all right Herodotus writes about the Pelagic people being the black Greeks from ancient times. Herodotus states that the Hellenes absorbed themselves voluntarily with the invading white barbarians, but that Pelagic Greeks remained pure blacks. So as I told you all before, when ancient Greece, let me go back to my picture. Sorry about that. Well, I'll just pull up another image of them because I got a lot of them. Here's another one of another European statue of a Moorish American. But when ancient Greece was um, invaded by a first wave of Yakubian offspring around 1100 BC, some of the indigenous Greeks amalgamated themselves with those barbarians by taking them and putting them in the harems and things of that nature. So this is where you started to get mulatto peoples being, you know, showing up in ancient Greece, ancient Egypt, ancient Carthage and ancient Rome. You know, this is where they start coming from. But you always had groups and, and, and thousands and millions of indigenous people who said, I'm not going to amalgamate myself with the descendants of Yakub or the Neanderthal people. If you hear me say the descendants of Yakub, I'm talking about the Neanderthal people. You had a lot of so-called black people who didn't want to amalgamate with them. They wanted to keep their original phenotypes. And how do you know that's true? Because that's why you still have full-blooded so-called black people today. So although that although the indigenous Americans um, may have intermixed with the Moors Europeans when they came here you gotta remember their phenotypes were the same and we're the descendants of those people so we actually are the descendants or the mixture of ancient people of Europa and ancient Americans believe it or not modern day so called black people are so you know that's what that is alright so next what I want to do is a time check real quick alright we almost at an hour that's pretty good all right, we can go over one more thing. So what you have right here in front of you is actually a picture of the daughters of Ham, the daughters of Shem, and the bleached out daughter of Japheth. OK, and this picture actually is named or, or titled Europe being supported by Africa and America. OK, Europe being supported by Africa and America. So I wanted you to get a picture of how the daughters of Shem and how the daughters of Ham looked. All right. That's what it's, this is for the women. out there, the so-called black women. This is the descendant of Shem right here. So you can always notice the descendant of Shem because they're going to be a primary, primarily a copper colored, bronze colored people. And although there were dark skinned descendants of Shem, but that's the primary color they were. So even if they dark skinned, it's going to be more of like a dark bronze, dark gold type color. It's not going to be like that pure black how some of the descendants of Ham looked, or quote-unquote Africa. Now, this is a daughter of Ham right here on the left, okay? As you can see, she's more dark-skinned, but you also have indigenous, you know, this daughters of Shem that's going to be born to look like this, you see? So these two women on the left and right are the descendants of Shem and the descendants of Ham, the daughters of Shem and the daughter of Ham supporting the bleached-out daughter of Europa or the bleached-out daughter of Japheth, all right? Now, I'll probably use this picture and go deeper into it on another tape because this actually is saying, you know, a billion words, believe it or not. But um, that's that's I just want to pull this up so we can get another image and another face, because I know I'm going to have a lot of women, you know, looking at tapes because, you know, y'all are so-called black women and y'all are Moorish peoples as well. And this information is, you know, just as much you all as the men. So this is how the women look, you know, on the far right, you're going to see a daughter of Shem, indigenous American woman. All right. Ancient, uh, ancient Etruscan. And on the far left, you're going to see an, a daughter of Ham. OK, ancient Egyptian phenotype, ancient Sudanese phenotype, ancient Canaanite phenotype. All right. And as I said, in the daughter, you're going to have the in the middle. You have the bleached out descendant of Japhet, one of the pale daughters from um, Asia Minor. OK, so I hope you all got a lot from this tape. We went over some good images. Um went over some good images this was the first tape i did using this you know screen recording um it actually went pretty good you know i enjoyed doing this it was fun of course you know it's gonna be more tapes coming um in the future let's see what other pictures we got just to kind of look through as you can see another uh taunting is moorish american 
statue over in Europa. And a lot of these are at the cigar shops, too. And as you can see, this is a short, you know, Moorish man. All right. With a, with a um, tobacco pipe or a marijuana pipe. OK, so we was dealing with the hemp and stuff like that, you know, long before anybody else. All right, let's see something else. Here is a Saracen, okay? Now, we're going to go deeper into these pictures on our Moorish Europe nobility tapes. But the daughters and sons of Sarah are the offspring that came through Isaac, okay? So you got to remember that Abraham had offspring with Sarah and he had offspring with Hagar. Now, earlier we talked about Hagar's offspring, which was Ishmael, okay? But when Sarah and Hagar, I mean, when Sarah and Abraham had offspring, it was Isaac. All right. So I'm going to say that one more time. So Abraham is the father. He had two women. One of them was Sarah. One of them was Hagar. His son with Hagar, which was the first son, is named Ishmael. His son with Sarah is Isaac. Isaac is the Semitic peoples that later on are going to be called Israel. OK, so the blessing and the inheritance, you know, it went through Isaac. It didn't necessarily go through Ishmael. All right. So believe it or not, the dark skinned, copper colored people in the west of Atlantis are descendants of Sarah or Saracens. And you will see that word used a lot referring to the Iberian peoples. OK, so they also going to call us Saracens, just like they'll call certain people Hagarines. So, so, you know, in history, you'll see people referred to or identified with the maternal offspring or the paternal. So when they say the Saracens, they're talking about the Abrahamic offspring that he had through Sarah. OK. And so-called black people of America, they come through the line of Sarah, believe it or not. So there's a picture and that's why it says Sarah senior at the top. But the picture you can see is of a so-called black man who has the curly hair and the dark skin, copper colored indigenous skin with the crowned serpent of wisdom above his head. All right. Dated at 1550, Bavarian State Museum, coat of arms, Saracenic coat of arms, all right? Once again, showing you that we were the nobility of medieval Europa. So when I said that the Atlanteans or the Americans went over and started ancient Etruria and started ancient Rome, started ancient Italy, started ancient Gaul, started ancient Germany, started ancient France, started ancient Britannica, all right? These are those people that you're going to see on the crowned uh, shields of Europa. The nobility. So these are the faces of Shem and Ham. All right. And um, hopefully you all enjoyed this tape. Got a lot from it. Stay tuned for the next one. Of course, it's your boy Blackbeard. I'm out.